Today we are going to be talking about how to create a pyro explosion inside of Maya uh, using the fluid dynamics. So let's quickly get into it. I'm going to switch my menu to FX and here we have already talked about the fluid dynamics and today we'll see how to create an explosion with it. So the first thing uh, that we are going to be doing is creating a 3D container. Right? And let's bring this up. Now the first thing I want to change is we are not going to be using the auto resize as you know auto resize automatically resize the whole bounding box according to the fluids instead I'm gonna keep it uh, to a fixed ratio and the reason is because it will help me with the overall final rendering simulation I don't have to dial in with the extra value and I know how much longer the explosion is going to be so I don't have to create an extra bounding box or extra boxes for it so this is going to be uh, the first overall ratio that I think and we can again we can change it anytime I want so I'm gonna keep it to maybe 30 and uh, I think we are going to be needing it a bit longer to something like this and there you go so let's change the base resolution which is the overall quality of our entire simulation and again let's play this back so this is what we have so the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, change the emitter uh, location to a bit lower maybe somewhere about here this looks good all right and uh, if you want to select your emitter you can select the whole bounding box and hit control and deselect your bounding box and that will leave you with the emitter itself okay so let's play this i'm going to turn off the grid so this is what we have right now all right so the first thing i'm going to do is with the simulation itself is add some more content methods that uh, for example i want a temperature and a fuel value as well by default both are turned off and uh, with this now we have temperature and fuel in our simulation as well so the next thing is going to the content details and adding a bit more density to our smoke all right this looks good there you go so we have already talked about uh, what these options are and what they do so i'm gonna just change the buoyancy to maybe like 1.5 uh, something like this and add a bit more noise to the overall simulation the dissipation will be 0.200 dissipation how quickly the smoke disappears or fades away or die and let's add a swirl value of 4 and maybe a noise value of 0.1 and we'll later on see how much change we want to add to our overall simulation okay so this is look good. this looks good uh, but the buoyancy is too much the overall pressure is too much i'm going to reduce it back to one all right and the next thing is going to the turbulence and adding a bit more turbulence into the overall simulation all right this looks good so i'm gonna just add a simple noise 0.100 to the temperature and i'm gonna leave it at, as it is okay so for a better visualization i'm gonna go to the lighting and add a self shadow this will help us visualize the overall simulation one more thing I'm going to do is go to shading and uh, let's maybe change this color to something like maybe a grayer value. And let's go about right here. Yeah. So if you haven't checked it out, I've already made a video on how to shade and render the Maya fluids. So you can check that out if you want to get into more of this. Okay, so this is what we have. Not that good, not that bad. Now to create uh, explosion, we need a pretty higher value of the emission. So if you go to our fluid emitter, you'll notice that we have a density value of 1, heat 1, fuel 1 and fluid drop of 1 and so on. I'm going to add a bit more uh, rate percentage or you can say the emission rate of our fluid by increasing the number to 200 instead of having 100. That way we have more of our uh, particles. All right and uh, again so how to create an explosion as i said it requires a very high number so i'm going to do a simple keyframing here i'm going to go to the fifth frame here and i'm just gonna make this maybe like a 500 not 500 let's uh, make it 300 300 and 300 value and i'm going to right click on this and i'm going to hit set key all right there you go and uh, let's play this so as you can see it goes to something like this and I'm going, I'm going to go to the 6 value and I'm going to make this 1, 6 keyframe sorry and I'm going to dial this back to 1, 1, right click set key, 1, right click set key. So what uh, what's happening here is that we, are, we have dialed in a 300 value which is a pretty high value. 
so it's going to create this type of a big pressure and then we have set it back to the one value which is going to decrease the value so that's why we're getting this type of mushroom and again i'm going to go to the 15th frame and uh, before 15th i'm going to go back to uh, sorry 15th and uh, 300 again and i'm going to set this back to 300 so here if you want to look at your keyframes open up your fluid and open up the fluid emitter so here you'll notice that we have 300 and then we are going back to one value which is the default value which is not too much and then again we are slowly dialing into the 300 so instead of having this either you can have a 14th keyframe with one value as well or you can let it uh, create one more cloud as well that's the goal here so again i'm going to make this 300 again and as I, as we did before adding a 300 value which is a large value so it can emit more particles and then going back to the normal so it's going back to a normal so we are creating a mushroom cloud here so again we are going to be doing the same again i'm going to make this instead of having one i'm going to make this zero uh, because i don't want any smoke after that and make this zero and set key so if we play this we get something like this all right not too bad not too good it looks pretty good uh, i'm gonna just do one thing instead of having the second mushroom cloud here what i'm gonna do is go to windows and before uh, changing the keyframe i'm gonna go to the 14 and again make this one so it creates a very drastic mushroom cloud all right yeah so there you go so again i'm gonna go to windows i think the overall keyframe is a bit too close to each other i'm gonna go to windows animation editor and here you'll find the graph editor open this up and uh, let's make this big so here you'll notice that we have uh, one keyframe on our 14th frame then on 15th we have 300 value and then 16 it goes back to zero so i'm gonna select all of these and i'm gonna hit ctrl x uh, basically we are cutting the overall keyframes here and i'm gonna go to maybe like uh, 25th frame and i'm gonna let's make it 20 paste this Control v and that's it so here we go right so let's increase the overall resolution here to see what we are dealing with and let's make this maybe like 80 all right uh, looks pretty good not too bad not too good and we have some tweaking to do so what i'm going to do is go to the content details and uh, let's maybe change the overall turbulence to maybe like 200 adding a bit more and swirl to maybe a value of six instead of four so we are increasing more swirliness and uh, let's decrease the buoyancy i think uh, that way it will be much more better visualized yeah there you go again i think there is some kind of gap there should be some kind of gap between both the keyframes i still think it's a bit too close so i'm going to go to my graph editor again select all of these Control x and let's uh, maybe go somewhere about how uh, about 30 and paste this again so there you go and uh, let's see this again yeah so here again we have one and uh, let's open this fluid and there you go one value and then going back to 300 and zero again we can do a small change here if you want a larger smooth uh, with the second mushroom cloud i'm gonna do a 500 value a bit more higher than the usual and let's see how that turns out right so that looks pretty good so there you go so there are some few tweakings that uh, i'm gonna do i'm gonna add a bit more density here and uh, yeah and uh, with the buoyancy of our temperature i'm gonna add a bit more to this as well maybe a 1.5 and let's add a bit more noise to this and there you go so we are going to let it do its thing all right so again the last thing is the smoke is not exactly disappearing what we want is a bit more dissipation so the smoke can die so let's uh, dial in some value and we'll see how quickly the smoke is dying and then we'll change the value according to that all right and that's maybe a bit too quick 
Okay, that seems like a pretty good number. So I guess what we can do is we can go for 0.4 value and that should be good enough. Uh, one more thing that uh, the container is a bit too small for this I guess. So we are just going to be increasing this just a little bit. Bring this up and uh, let's bring this down. Okay. And for the side value I'm going to go for 35 and 35 that should be good. And the rest for the shading part again uh, you can use uh, the temperature here if you like. All right. Uh, otherwise what else you can do is you can use a density channel as well where you can pretty much see how much fire you want in there you can use that as well so i'm going to keep it to temperature i think that looks pretty good again you can change the overall transparency how much you want and uh, the overall smoke here and i think this looks pretty good so for the final thing again the base resolution is overall quality of your entire simulation the higher the number is the more better quality you are going to get i'm going to keep i'm keeping this low for the tutorial purpose but you should be doing it a uh, pretty high number because you're going to be doing your final simulation uh, i'm going to be catching this uh, with a little bit higher value but i suggest you go much higher than that so it does gri give uh, you can say a bit good quality result but at cost of your render time so there are two things to keep in mind the first thing is it's going to cost you at your catching time as well it's going to take a lot of time for the catching itself and then it's going to take another lot of hours for the rendering itself so keep that in mind before dialing in your value so i'm going to do maybe a 150 here i think that is a reasonable number for this and i'm just going to go to the end catch create new catch and my fluids All right, so our catching is done here and uh, if you play this, uh, I'm gonna just scrub through here. So we have something like this. Uh, that looks pretty good to me. Again, you can feel free to do your type of shading. And uh, yeah, maybe change the color if you want. Again, you can play with the density here of how much you want your overall smoke or fire in there and maybe change the smoke color to something like this uh, yeah. and again play around with the transparency how much transparency you want in your entire simulation that will be a bit more helpful for you and uh, when you're happy with the overall result uh, you can play blast this or you can render this and you can start doing your post processing and so on um, maybe change the color to something like maybe a bit more different than usual right and uh, have fun with this again you can let me just change the color back to the orange again you can what you can do is if you want to again see this uh, how the overall simulation is what you can do is uh, change the overall settings here to maybe like the HD uh, version and uh, you have set your timeline here and i'm gonna just get rid of this overall heads up display here and there you go so you can set your view here and you can right click on your timeline make sure it is set to playback every frame and in the play blast setting i'm gonna open this up uh, let it set for avi we want 100 percent quality we don't want to change the encoding or anything like that uh, but here you can display size you can change it to from render settings that we have just changed and from here that you can just hit play blast all right so there you go here you have a nice play blast now you can visualize your overall simulation how it's looking and if you want to change anything with your overall simulation right maybe add a bit more buoyancy make it a little faster and this one is good too i think we have a bit more turbulence in this by looking at the simulation uh, maybe dial down the swirl and turbulence just a little bit and apart from that if you don't want this bounding box to be shown in your play blast what you can do is go to display and uh, from here you can change this to none and now you have your simulation that's it nothing else so again that's it for this one play around with this create your own technique create a bit more your own variation and just try to have fun with it that's it for this one i'll see you in the next video